What's the most important thing when you make an adaptation? Is it sticking to the author's vision? Is it perhaps bringing a new vision? Well, today we're talking a little bit about that, but mostly how it pertains to live action. So maybe right now, adapting things to live action doesn't have the best reputation, and I'm mostly talking about Disney. And I think even in the past, anime adaptations don't have uh, the best reputation, you know? But recently, there's been a new shining rising star, the One Piece live action. So did it break the live action curse? If I had to say, I think it did. It accomplished something real special. There are a few key aspects that I would like to explore that basically make or break a live action adaptation. And I know some people may be tired about live action adaptations and after several failures and disappointments, they don't want anymore do not touch my favorite franchise don't you dare that's a lot of people's worries and feelings they are already jaded they don't want a low effort attempt that doesn't really care about the fans but that is actually my first point on why this is actually seeing such a huge success i believe when they created this they took into account three important parts the fans the author and the potential new fans so this is really good, and even if it sounds simple, many times adaptations like this only focus on the new fans. The worst part about it is that in the past, a lot of live action adaptations not only failed to bring in new fans, but they would also just make the old fans really mad. Because when they don't understand what makes something special, instead of trying to sell whatever wacky rules the anime would have, what a lot of live actions would do is that they would want to force their story to be a lot more grounded in reality. And with One Piece having such a weird world, there was a lot they could have changed and ruined in the process. There are some things that just don't need an explanation. You just show them and people will get it. There's no need for dumbing down. You just see like a snail phone and you get it. It's a snail and it's a phone. It is weird, but it works. And a lot of details like this respected everyone, the fans, the new fans. And it is clear from the fact that they were really close to Oda, the creator of One Piece. And I think because of this reason, what we got was something special that was true and stick to the world of One Piece. And let me tell you about my favorite part and my favorite reason on why seeing something like a live action is just so fun. And I think with this adaptation, it was especially such a strong point that they had. And it is the casting, the characters. I really feel seeing characters we love be as real as possible is something we all want in some way or another. I remember when I was small, I would always think about Dreamcast for existing franchises. Or even more than that, I would always think if I wanted to make a fan film, who would I play, which characters my friends could play. I would always be trying to find the perfect cast for my imaginary movies. Which sometimes I did get the chance to do a thing or another. But aside from that, I do believe there is an innate feeling of wanting to make things real. And let me tell you. What they did for One Piece was just, wow, phenomenal. You can see that every actor really fits their role. They got the perfect people to play them. They nailed the looks. They nailed their personalities. I think just seeing that pleased me a lot. And even though performances were a little bit different sometimes, I still think they have a lot of the spirit in there. I even like that the actors are not big names in the industry. One of my pet peeves is that too often I see people wanting to fan cast characters by just grabbing known people who barely fit the role. Maybe they have like one thing in common with the character and I'm like, uh, no. <laughs> I don't like it being just someone who is popular. I felt this approach of just finding the right person who would give us the best performance was all we needed. But hey, don't get me wrong, I do love the idea of Jamie Lee Curtis playing Dr. Kureha in the possible second season. I won't deny that. <laughs> she is a perfect fit and she clearly wants the role, so who am I to say no to that? But that's the thing, she fits the role. 
I don't mind that. The world and the characters are the things that I believe made it all work out. But what were the things that didn't quite fully work out for me? Because not everything was perfect and while I enjoyed just seeing the world and the characters come to life, there are a few things that suffered in the process. I think there are two negatives that can be quite troublesome when working with adaptations and they can be very hard to avoid when it comes to a live action. It all comes to the time and commitment. But what do I mean by that? Well, the first one usually applies a lot to movies, but since this is a series, we kinda get away with that a little bit, but yet we don't fully escape some pitfalls that we kinda fell on. Time here means crunching the story, making things fit around, and that also implies cutting things out for the sake of brevity. This was basically essential to make One Piece happen. You know, seeing as it is, pretty well known for being a long series. In the story, some things require more time than others, but it is important to know what we spend time on and especially what we focus on. And this was a miss for me sometimes. Sometimes in the live action, I didn't feel we get the chance to understand the characters and their motivations. One Piece has a really nice structure that even though I get it was hard to summarize, what happens is that some really important things to focus on get skipped sometimes. Things like motivations, fights, world exploration, but yeah, there's only so much you can do. Things will get cut out, but even then, I still believe some cuts could have been avoided, especially when it comes to characters. Characters are so important to the world of One Piece, even those that you would think were throwaway characters sometimes end up being much more than that. But I know, it's probably the hardest one to manage. How do you introduce a character without making things bloated? I understand, but I also do believe that instead of that kind of bloat, the show, more often than not, opted to keep some pretty slow moments that really didn't add too much to the story rather than choosing to expand on the character development, which is usually also pushed by antagonistic forces. Some key examples without spoiling too much would be something like removing Django, which is a main foil to Usopp, someone who isn't as intense as Kuro, but also lets Usopp step up and step out of his comfort zone to save someone. Another one that I'm more understanding of was skipping Don Krieg. I know it helped to showcase the Argon pirates more, but it probably robbed a little bit of the development that we normally saw unfold on that arc. With the time available, I don't blame them too much, as I know Don Krieg by itself isn't that memorable, but I still enjoyed the dynamic of everything there, the crew splitting, the fights, finding more enemies, the teamwork, all the lessons, and just more of variety would have been nice. So those examples are just related to time. Let's talk about what happened to that commitment to the vision. Now this can be either good or bad. In this case, as I previously explained, as long as they don't try to ground things too much in reality, then it just wouldn't suffer from that easy pitfall. Now, bringing in a new vision is all about having a new way to show stories under a different light. And that can be refreshing. Things like the Ninja Turtles or the Spider-Verse are great at doing this. They bring a new spin to it, which doesn't need to be identical to the source material, but it has respect for it. And even if they change so many things, adaptations like this work so well because of the risk they take, which is something that I want to talk more about in a future video. These were just examples of new takes that freshen up the formula. But for now, and for a live action, especially its first iteration, a lot of people do expect it to stick to the source material. And I think while well, for the most part I wouldn't criticize this, it was a little bit of a mixed bag. I think when it came to storylines and how they tried to capitalize on that, they did a really good job. Expanding on Kobe and his storyline after meeting Luffy is such a great inclusion, and I think making a bigger deal out of Arlong wasn't a bad choice at all. The parts where it kind of missed for me were some either small misconceptions or weird directions on the characters. I understand with how cartoony the main characters are, they might feel like one-note characters, but I feel like they are simple yet with nuance. Just to mention one example, they made Luffy outright good out loud instead of showing that he is good. It's again the show Don't Tell, which Luffy is just great for. He makes people trust him 
out of how simple-minded and willing he is to help. Not because he says he is a good pirate, like how he mentions in the live action that he's just a different kind of pirate. No, Luffy doesn't think of himself as a different pirate. He just likes being a pirate, and he is a pirate, and he wants to be the king of the pirates. I want more dumb and shouty Luffy action. So yeah, things were simplified, so we didn't get to see everything. So what changes were it like? I don't know, it's hard to say. I want more, but that is a hard thing to ask for. With season 2 coming up, I guess my biggest hope is that they do a good job at adapting every single fight. I love how there are always like matchups and there's always like a good puzzle and solution when it comes to the fighting. So in the end, what I think about all of it, it might not be perfect or identical, but I do believe that as long as it is fun and it brings new eyes into the franchise, that is totally a win. And I feel like I've seen so many new eyes enjoying the series. I'm happy. I liked it. What more can I ask? There is one little worry that I had and I'm not sure how to square this up. I think I like sharing what I enjoy. Yet sometimes I kind of want people experiencing the exact same thing that I did in the exact same way that I did. So this being their first experience for One Piece, I don't know how some scenes hit for them. So that kind of makes me worry at times. But then again, I feel like I experienced both the anime and the manga at different times and I've cried and enjoyed each experience just as much every time. So maybe there is no problem and just more people get introduced to those. So yeah, maybe for hardcore One Piece fans it may not be the best version out there that there is, but I'd say this is still such a gift prepared with love and with a good sense of what made the original work. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed my MS Paint drawing. I probably want to do more media analysis like this, so subscribe. Let me know what else I should talk about. Hopefully, I'll see you soon, grubs. Bye-bye.